What's going on my beautiful people from YouTube? I wanna show you the latest development in AI technology. This is big. And when I say big, I'm talking about as big as the internet when it first became available to the masses. Meta, the company formerly known as Facebook, just released their AI model called Llama. Llama is designed to be a research tool that's gonna to allow for even more AI models to be created. But action, companies release models all the time. Why is this a big deal? Let me explain. While there are various AI models out there, this one is unique in three different ways. First, its performance supersedes that of GPT-3. While being a much lighter application, I'm talking way lighter, GPT-3 runs on 175 billion parameters, while Llama only needs 65 billion. Just to, just to clarify, let me make sure you guys understand that ChatGPT and GPT-3 are both based on the same architecture and share a lot of similarities, but they've been trained to do very different things. ChatGPT, for example, it's optimized for conversational applications, and it's been tailored specifically for its use case. While GPT-3 is a more general purpose language model that can be applied to a wide range of natural language processing tasks, to be fair to numbers, ChatGPT also uses only 20 billion parameters. But back to Llama and that first highlight. Its track performance on question and answering and common sense benchmarks outperform the competition, especially when considering the size of the model. For instance, Llama 13B, which is a smaller version, outperform GPT-3 on most benchmarks. Despite being 10 times smaller, this means that you have a much more optimized model that requires way less computational power. This brings us to point number two, and the question of hardware. Running these massive language models is expensive. In terms of processing power, just as an example, running ChatGPT costs OpenAI $100,000 a day. Meta says you can run Llama on an NVIDIA DGX standalone workstation. It's still expensive, about $100,000 starting price for one of those things, but it didn't stop there. They also released that version I mentioned earlier, the Llama 13B, and it only needs an NVIDIA V100 to run, and its MSRP is about $15,000, but it's been out on the market for such a long time that you can pick one up between $35 to $4,500. But here's my favorite part. Although Meta didn't specifically mention other cards besides the NVIDIA V100, there is nothing stopping users from using a consumer card, such as the latest NVIDIA you know, 4090. Since by the numbers, it outperforms NVIDIA's Tesla V100, and it's just $2,000. This is an exciting, exciting development because we could soon see applications leveraging decentralized networks, like Flux. And decentralized marketplaces like the Akash network to run their AI models. There's a lot of buzz around this and people are already starting to make these services available. Now, hear me out on the most exciting part of all of this. Meta is making Llama accessible. Yeah, like really accessible. Their focus is to democratize AI technology by allowing anybody, just anyone to take advantage of it. That's right. When I say anyone, I'm talking about you and me. Meta changed the landscape by opening this language model to the general public. That's game changing. Think of the internet in its early days when not a lot of people had access to it. It was slow, it was ugly, but soon enough, companies like AOL started sending free CDs to everyone and more and more people got online. And that changed everything. We're going to see mass adoption and utilization of AI models by people who previously weren't able to have access to such groundbreaking technology. Because Llama is designed for research and further AI development, we're gonna see new AI models that are tailored for specific applications. This is gonna open up a world of possibilities. I said it, the world. This can very well be the nudge we need to level the playing field. Because of this openness from Meta and allowing anyone to have access to this technology all over the world, even in countries with fewer resources, we will now be able to compete with the so-called tech elites of the world. This will certainly drive innovation, creativity, and progress in the field of AI, but it won't stop there. Llama will soon be used for a range of scientific research, from biotech companies to environmental research, and even decentralized protocols. 
I appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me learning about this incredible opportunity. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I'd also love to hear your feedback and find out what you think about this technology. Leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. But in closing, I want to leave you with Meta's own words from their most recent published paper, which I will link down below. Unlike previous studies, it is possible to achieve state-of-the-art performance by training exclusively on publicly available data. Without resorting to proprietary data assets, we hope that releasing these models to the research community will accelerate the development of large language models. I'm glad you stuck around until after the credits because nothing is perfect and there are concerns about the technology. While hardware requirements are less stringent than previous models, we are still underproducing the necessary processors to meet our global demand. As a crypto miner myself, this is something I have to pay attention to. Scarcity means higher prices for these graphics cards and even ASIC miners. There are only a handful of chip manufacturers and when demand increases, all silicone manufacturing pays the price. Now, Meta, just like Google and a lot of other companies, depend on user data for their revenue models. This means the more they know about you, the better ads you can serve, translating into more sales. Not owning your data is the scariest part of all of this. And it's kind of why blockchain technology has become so popular, especially when Facebook experienced data leaks in 2013, 2014, 2015, and then a bunch of them in March of 2018. It's scary to think about the vast amount of your data, yeah, your data flowing between these parties. Now, I think this is why Meta is pursuing this open platform approach. They want people to trust them. If they're going to give this away and allow anyone to use it, it's definitely a way to gain consumer trust. I do speculate that people are getting more data savvy, meaning they don't want companies snooping around what's rightfully ours, yours. With the power of AI, there will be more opportunities for companies like Facebook, like Google, to instead of tracking all of your moves, if they only track a few, they can guess or hypothesize what your interests might be and serve you ads that way because people are locking things down. Uh, the iPhone is a perfect example. They can barely get any data out of that now because of how Apple locked things down. So this extrapolation of data is going to come in handy. Regardless of these concerns, Llama being open to the general public is a huge breakthrough for AI research and Meta as a company. The need for such applications cannot be overstated. It is needed. It will drive innovation. And I'm so thankful, so thankful to be living during this time where I have the opportunity to see all of this cool stuff being built and sharing it with you. I will see you guys on the next video. Take care.